when I saw this article, and I'm going through it, we're talking to it as a crew, Media Research Center, your organization, reveals that Google has allegedly interfered in U.S. elections 41 times, 16 years, favoring left-wing candidates and censoring their opponents as outlined by the MRC Free Speech America Vice President Dan Schneider and Editor Gabriel Presti. All these things that you guys find out, what did you learn from it? Well, we, we, you've got a real problem with big tech in that big tech is not playing by the same rules that the rest of the United States is playing by. Uh, anybody uh, who is a, an American citizen has a right to participate in the election process, but only so far. You can make a contribution. You can only go so far. Uh, corporations can't be involved in politi political um, action at the federal level. Yet you've got big tech that is picking winners and losers in elections. Um, and when they do it the way they're doing it, uh, it, it becomes a very serious threat to democracy itself. Let me explain that. There was a, a, a study done by the Pew Center in 2011. Now, this is a dated study, but, but the numbers are only going to be uh, bigger than that, where they found that 7% of adults make their decision on who to vote for based on a Google search. Wow. 7%. 7%. 7%. So um, if you look at the 22 uh, Senate uh, race, the races in the top 12 most contested races, you had where the Democrats and the, and the Republicans were concerned. 87% of the Republicans were put at the bottom of the first page. Now, what do, you, what do you do when you're doing a Google search, when you're looking for something? You have your answer within two or three people. Mm -hmm. Now, you open up, you're looking to see what's the price of fried chicken, and you get you know a couple mm -hmm. of prices, and you're done. Uh, what Google did deliberately was to put the Republicans at the bottom of page one or in the case of seven of the 12 Republican candidates for the Senate in these most contested races, they put them on page two. Less than 1% of the public ever goes to page two. That's right. So that's deliberate interference in a Senate campaign where you're keeping information from the public or burying it so far deep, they'll never go looking for it. The 7% that make their decision based on what they look for. Google knows what it's doing. So then Google goes to Capitol Hill when they're hauled up, like Facebook is hauled up, Jack Dorsey was hauled up to Capitol Hill, and raise your right hand and swear an oath to tell the truth um, and the whole truth, nothing but the truth, that sort of thing. And they argue that they are not a publisher, they're a platform. Now, what, why is that important? Because if you're the Washington Post, or if you're CNN, or I suspect this podcast, and you say something that's defamatory, you will be held liable for what, for what you say. Think about the, uh, the Covington kid. This was a several years ago, a Right to Life march, and there was that high school kid. Just standing uh, there. Standing in yeah. front of, of an Indian person, and they, they just blasted him all over CNN, the Washington Post. Everybody blasted him as somehow doing something that was racist or something or other. Well, it turned out he was doing nothing. This poor kid was just standing there. Well, guess what? There was a lawsuit against CNN, a lawsuit against the Washington Post. The one with the Washington Post was settled with big smiles on the part of the plaintiffs. Um, however, anything that was on Facebook or Google, they couldn't be touched because they are officially platforms. They're not publishers. So anything that Google does that puts on there, they just say, it's not us. It's the people who, who used us. They're the ones who are responsible. And that's been the, the, the protection that they've had. Yet they are deliberately participating in the process. So they should be held as accountable as the Washington Post or your podcast. So how do you do that, though? When, when you say Washington Post or, or the podcast or anybody, how do you hold them accountable? You sue them. <laughs> you sue them. If, 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 if you defame me um, and you, uh, you, you, you cause me damage, I have the right uh, for legal redress, and I can, I can respond with a lawsuit. Um, it's not very easy 
to win against the media because you have to prove not just that I was defamed, but that I was deliberately defamed by you. And it hurt me and it cost me. Um, in the case of the Covington kid, he was able to show all three things very clearly, which is why he won his case. Um, but but the, the, if you, again, if you're a big tech company and you've been able to get away with declaring yourself a platform, Wikipedia. Wikipedia says the most the nastiest things about people, and it allows the nastiest things to be said mm -hmm. about people. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen, I've seen just really scurrilous stuff. Wikipedia can't be touched. They say we're just the platform. People put their stuff on there. Uh, but we, it's, we're not responsible for taking it off. So, 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 Brent. So, but for Google, it's a search engine. It's a publicly traded company, correct? So, mm -hmm. their attitude is basically, like, hey, listen, buy your own. Like, remember, well, mm -hmm. make make your own, just like with the with X. Everybody, I'm sorry, with, with formerly known as Twitter. Everybody that I knew that's from the left. Everybody from California. All the liberals are like, like, hey, if you don't like it, buy your buy buy your own yeah. or make your own. And that's what obviously um, Elon Musk did. So, what what do you say to the people that are just like, you know, oh, start your own? I know. What do we have? Uh, Rob Duck Duck Go. There's Bing. There's there's other search platforms. I could I could see that, but what what, what do you say to people that are like? Well, then start a new one and you do your own searches. Well, well, theoretically that's right, but Google is so big and so powerful, you really have to start thinking about monopolies. Bing, as an example, Bing is Microsoft. Microsoft spent hundreds of millions of dollars challenging Google. And they got a whopping 2% of the market. Google has 92% of the market wow. worldwide. Mm -hmm. you can't, and you know, they're sitting on billions of dollars in cash. It, it, YouTube posed a bit of a threat. They gobbled them, mm -hmm. just like Facebook gobbled Instagram. You can't compete against these guys. Mm -hmm. They're just too powerful worldwide. When, when these rules are made by big tech, when big tech decides to censor you based on some thing they don't like, um, for example, abortion, they have a very, very stern position on abortion, and it ain't pro-life. When you have that kind of policy, it's not just in the United States of America. It's worldwide where these policies, uh, uh, unless you're China and says, say, no, I won't let you in. Uh, but any country that invites them in is also inviting in that censorship. And you know, here's the interesting thing. The United States is the only country on the face of this globe where free speech is a right. That is an inherent right only in the United States. So the censorship that takes place outside of the United States, I, I, I pity those people because there's really nothing they can do about it. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.